Um, All right, what we got? So the next one, honestly, might have been my least favorite episode of maybe the whole season. Definitely really? the second half um, was the the face hugging aliens. <laughs> Um, and it's not even to say that it was a bad episode, because... Uh, is there a bad Rick and Morty episode? I don't know if there is, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, so they, they got on this, uh, this planet of face-hugging aliens, where their lifespan was, like, 30 minutes tops. Right. And, basically, the whole objective of that species was to, um, become a parasite to some kind of living being... And you infect them for 30 minutes, and then you, like, die. poop out an egg, basically. And that's, like, the new face-hugging alien. And then, like, whatever being they were in previously, like, died. Um, like I said, I really didn't, like, super like the episode. Mm -hmm. um, I did like how they kind of started it, like, halfway through the story of yeah, the episode. Yeah, and then they came back. And then they came back, which, like, helped explain how they even got to that scenario yeah. in the first place. And it was also really cool to see that there was, like, a... Um, they hinted at, like, some sort of, like, interest between the two parasites that were on them. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then like... But, like... And so, basically, yeah. like, when it goes back, it basically... Like, you figure out that the very opening of the story, like... Rick and Morty killed two lovers. Mm -hmm. And it was like, that's so weird. Like, you know, it was so like, ah, oh, it's an alien, you just pulled it off. But it's like, uh, you know, at the end of the day, like, like that was actually the end of a love story. Like, yeah. A tragic end to a love story that you didn't yeah. even know. You're like, and it's so like, you watch it again and you see him like, you see the little tentacle like reach out for the other one when it finally gets pulled off and you're like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Like, these weren't like inherently bad people and in fact like they were trying to keep their hosts alive and stay alive and have a purpose but uh but in the end like it just didn't matter that was a really cool and it was a weird twist on alien you're right uh chest bursters it was it exact it was a uh satire of uh alien and had a couple other satirical elements and it did a lot of weird things in it um i feel like it kind of had a narrative uh, again to kind of get into like some meaning behind it I feel like part of it was trying to say something along the lines of, like, obviously they like to do their satire of pop culture, like, things, like Alien or Star Wars or D&D uh, &D or whatever. Like, they do like to do these types of satires, and then they also like to have uh, meta-commentary on things, like, and, and the world and, like, and, and lessons, right? Uh, even though uh, some aren't as clear, like, in the, uh, like, in the... In the opener, where you know there's the big monster and he gets like stabbed in the eye and the hornets and then he explodes and then Rick's like, "There's a lesson here, but uh, I'm not gonna be the one to figure it out." It's yeah. like in a way, like they kind of do that sometimes. It's like, yeah, there's a lesson, but we're gonna hide it and we're gonna hide mm -hmm. it behind the fun times. We're gonna hide it behind the satire of pop culture, but really we're just trying to tell a good story and we're gonna have a lesson behind it. Uh, and I think this one maybe was talking about like how sometimes like we feel like we just have to follow the. The, you know, the, the follow the guideline of what we think we're supposed to do. And it's like, you know, you're just supposed to, you know, be on the earth, have kids and die. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, like that's, you know, and that feels like, is that our evolutionary need or whatever like that? But in reality, like, you know, there's a lot more when you, you know, when you dive deeper into, uh, you know, what life is and you try to explore that more. And, and it was also, uh, so it kind of told that story, I felt. But it also, at the same time, uh, also showed another evil side of Rick and Morty and the fact that they don't have a lot of remorse. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and again, like, we don't really sometimes realize, but, like, we're sympathizing with the villains of most of these conflicts. Like, we're watching the villains of the majority of these stories. Like, half the time, they are causing the conflict, they're wiping out races of people, and then, like, and they're getting off scot-free, and then they're having a fun time and going back to dinner. Like, that's, like, like majority of the time they're the bad people and but at the, at, but we have so much fun with them and they're exciting characters that we sometimes forget that and so like when we see them in a bind we're like we want them to get out of the bind we don't really care too much about whether or not they you know ruin a civilization and obviously uh this is easier on an animated platform if we had seen this in live action like these this content in live action we'd have a very different opinion oh, yeah. in fact on this episode um the animators, because it was so gory and graphic, the animators were like, "This is a rough, what, like was rough for them to edit." They were like, "This is this is kind of like rough." Yeah. I mean, at some point they had to like like show people being like ripped apart and stuff like that. It's like the animators have a crazy time on this. Yeah. Uh, gotta go, boyos. Uh, good stuff. I'll try to tune in some more. Thanks, man. And it was good having you.
Now, I did have uh, just one more um, thing to talk about with this episode in particular, and then we can move on to the next one. But I want to I wanna hear your thoughts on when they were flying out of the planet, and they were just, like, destroying everything. Right. And, they, oh. and they came across, like, the Twin Towers. Right. And they're like, eh, probably shouldn't. And then, they're, and then they came across Pearl Harbor, and they're like, Pearl Harbor, on the other hand... That's yeah. fair play. And that so was like, obviously, like, super, like... That was also another thing where it was, like... They acknowledged that, like, our humor... They're like, our humor is dark. And but our and our humor will touch anything. They're like, our humor is not bound by anything. And the only reason they decided not to hit them was not because of some idea of good or evil or what's too bad to do. It was because... They thought it was a low blow for comedy. They mm-hmm. thought it was overused in comedy, and they didn't want to follow into a comedy trope. That was the only reason they didn't do it. And then they said, "Oh well, you know, people don't mess with Pearl Harbor as much, yeah. so we can do that." And it's like it just again instills the idea that like, um, like there are you know, it instills the idea that they're trying not to hit comedy tropes, and they're intent. And they're also they also in a way satirize comedy tropes and how like some comedy tropes are just like like. Really, like that's just in bad taste, right? But at the same time, they also prove like, yeah, some things are in bad taste, but at the same time, we're gonna hit comedy notes that are dark and we don't really care what you think. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, yeah, we're gonna make you think that we're taking the high road here, but we're really not. We're just trying to tell a good joke and this was the way around a trope that would tell a funnier one. Yeah, so sure. that was pretty interesting. And I mean, I, and it, it works for some people, you know? 